and we're providing teachers with additional tools so they don't have to only teach leftism. Our content is completely wholesome and pro-American. Either they haven't really watched our content and they're making up lies, or they have watched our content and they're ignoring the truth. So I'm Dr. Christina Dahl, and in my job, I try to understand what the impacts of climate change are going to be for communities in the United States and around the world. And I do a lot of work to communicate those impacts with the hope of inspiring climate action. Those living in fear of climate change are eager to do anything it takes, but others are starting to ask questions. This is Anya. She lives with her parents, Timon and Clara, in the old city of Krakow. So in this video, they choose to present a character who is white. She's a young woman, um, student. And it's really interesting because when we think about the people who are being most affected by climate change, they really don't fit this characterization, right? You know, this is someone who uh, by most standards would be relatively uh, insulated from the effects of climate change. And you could imagine how the choice of a different central character would affect this entire video. Um, for example, if you had chosen a, uh, a child who is living in California's Central Valley and her parents are farm workers who have to go to work and endure days of extreme heat or wildfire smoke, to do their jobs and they're struggling with poverty. How that might really change the narrative that's being presented here. Anya's parents are proud of her hard work. But when her anxiety gets high and she tells them that fossil fuels will soon lead to a climate disaster, they challenge her with some thought-provoking questions. They encourage her to consider how the planet has been warming and cooling since prehistoric times long before carbon emissions were a factor. So I actually got my PhD in paleoclimate, which is the reconstruction of the history of Earth's climate. And so I know very well that yes, Earth's climate has changed over time, sometimes dramatically, um, but in many ways that are understandable and they're entirely natural. But what we're experiencing now is unprecedented in both in its uh, magnitude and in the speed at which the change is happening. And it's very, very clearly tied to human activity. There is no question about that. And so when Anya's parents raise this, it's introducing to the viewer of this video a false equivalence between the facts that her teachers presented at school and this uninformed opinion that her parents have, right? And it's putting Anya in a really difficult place where she has to try to balance what she's learning from presumably a trusted teacher at school and people she loves, her parents. In 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine and Poland supported the Ukrainian people. As a result, Russia stopped supplying Poland with natural gas and Poland banned the Russian coal that many people use to heat their homes. These sudden changes are making energy even more expensive. Anya is finally recognizing the bitter irony. Poland's efforts to be more green had left them vulnerable to Russia's manipulations. So I think this gets to the heart of the framing of this entire video, which is painting a really dismal picture of Poland without fossil fuels, right? And it's ignoring the fact that Poland is in this position because it is dependent on fossil fuels. So. How would that story have been different if 15, 20 years ago, Poland had um, been building up its clean energy sector and installing a lot of solar and wind, right? They wouldn't have been as exposed to the vagaries of fossil fuel, uh, you know, international um, negotiations and, and politics. In this moment, countries like Poland could double down on their coal use and say, this is our future, right? Um, or natural gas use imported from other countries. Or they could say, wait a minute, we are really vulnerable here, and this exposed that vulnerability. Let's try to reduce that vulnerability by building clean energy independence within our borders. From what she's reading, Anya sees that renewable energy sources don't contribute that much energy. 
Unlike coal or fossil fuels, energy from wind or sun is unreliable, expensive, and difficult to store. In fact, only 10% of the world's energy comes from those sources. The, a lot of this narrative that renewable energy is expensive and unreliable and we can't store it is very, very much playing into the hands of the fossil fuel industry and what they would like you to believe about renewable energy. Um, and on all three of those descriptors, expensive, hard to store, and unreliable, simply not true, right? Solar is now the cheapest energy form in history because prices have plummeted so much. Storage technology has come a really long way and is also becoming much more affordable. Um, and in terms of reliability, some recent extreme events have shown us that solar and wind are often the most reliable forms of energy. And so I, I think it's important to be questioning what kind of influence the fossil fuel industry has on narratives in videos like this, but also the narratives that we ingest more broadly as a society, right? We have companies like Exxon and Chevron who very desperately want you to believe that they're doing the right thing for the planet. Um, and a video like this just plays right into those talking points. At school, most of her friends barely talk to her anymore. Even Magda, who can smell the fumes from the burning trash, continues to believe that Poland's coal ban is saving the earth. After many arguments, they've stopped walking together. Losing friends has been hard for Anya, but her family is proud of her for telling the truth. Yeah, I think in this part of the video, it really does present climate change as something that people can be on one side of or another. And the reality is that we're all on the same side and we're all on the losing side. This is a complicated issue. Um, it's an issue that scientifically there's no question about, but it's also an issue that, like, what do you do when you know you need to reduce your coal use, but you don't want people to freeze to death in the winter, right? We, we do have to find these balances between people's needs and people's lives and livelihoods now and livelihoods of people on this planet for generations to come. Timon, Clara, and grandfather Jakob are encouraging Anya by sharing their own stories of perseverance. Timon remembers having to meet people late at night in a freezing cellar to avoid the communist authorities. But that didn't stop him from sharing his ideas. Grandfather Yakub tells her about the Warsaw Uprising, when the city's Jews fought back against the Nazis. Through her family's stories, Anya is realizing that fighting oppression is risky and that it always takes courage. Oh. I, I don't know what to say. It's, like, it's horrifying. Climate advocates are not trying to oppress people. They are not trying to wipe out entire races of people. They are not trying to wipe out entire ethnicities. They're not trying to take over the world and take over your land. Like, they're trying to preserve a livable future for you and your children and grandchildren. Finally, things are happening in Anya's house. Jakob is delighted to be living with the family once again. He reminds them that no matter what happens, they're better together. So here at the end of this video, we're presented with a girl who is essentially a hero, right? She's advocated for, uh, you know, bringing back coal use in her community, in her country, and everyone's happy and warm and safe. Um, and we end on a note that is very much about family and togetherness. Um, and those, again, are values that appeal to most people, right? Most value their families, they value togetherness. And I think it's an ending that kind of sweeps a lot of the denial that's in this video, um, a lot of the red herrings just under the rug, right? So that you're left with this really favorable impression of a girl who has uh, taken on a massive challenge and won and everyone has benefited from it. I'm a parent of two kids in public schools and in California, it's a different world than in Florida, but um, I would ask them what they think about this video and engage them in a conversation about some of these complexities to the extent that parents are comfortable doing so. 
Um, and if folks are seeing that what their, their children are being shown in the classroom is not aligned with the science as they understand it, they should talk to the teachers about it and talk to school administrators about it. Um, just in the same way that parents can oppose book bans in schools, right? And say, this content is actually really important for our children to be seeing. Um, they can say, wait a minute, you're showing videos that are not based on the science. Um, and I would hope that with sufficient parental pressure, districts would decide not to show videos like this. Yeah.